Hello everyone, welcome to a new advanced geometry lecture. We will have a look at theorem 1.81 in section 1.8, page 20, from Geometry Revisited by Cogsitter and Greitzer. The theorem is about the nine point circle. Here's the statement and a simple view of this celebrated theorem. Let's go ahead and highlight some key facts provided in the problem. So the feet of the three altitudes, huh? when we look at this shape, we see our triangle ABC and the feet of our altitudes are D, E, and F. And obviously, H would be the orthocenter, the intersection of these altitudes. Let's move on. The midpoints of the three sides, I would be the midpoint of BC, J is the midpoint of AC, and K is the midpoint of AB. And finally, the midpoints of the segments from the three vertices to the orthocenter, namely L, points L, M, and N, are those midpoints. Uh, observe that huh? AL is equal to LH, BM is equal to MH, and HN is equal to NC. Now what's so interesting is that the feet of the altitudes, the midpoints of the sides, and these three points L, M, N, the midpoints of the segments from the three vertices to the orthocenter, they are all concyclic. Those nine points are concyclic, meaning they all lie on the same circle. And it is highlighted here that this circle has radius half of the size of the circumradius of triangle ABC. Okay, let's make some key observations. Here. So we can see that in this picture we have quite a few midpoints. So this suggests that we can easily find some parallel lines and better than that some equal line segments. Uh, the trick is to use appropriate ones that would give us the result that we need. Let's make a couple of uh, observations. So first of all, let's focus on triangle ABH. Huh? So let me write that down. So in triangle ABH, huh? um, we just observe that line segment KM is the midline of that triangle. Why is that? Because K is the midpoint of side AB, M is the midpoint of side BH. As such, huh? so I'll call this result 1A, it turns out that KM, being the midline of triangle ABH, is actually parallel to AH. And in addition, because it's the midline, it's obvious that KM would be half of the size of AH. So 2KM is equal to AH. Let me make sure to put the, the sign to show that these two lines are parallel. And notice also that because AH is part of our uh, altitude AD, it is not surprising to see that KM extended would be perpendicular to B BC. Let's now have a look at another triangle. Huh? Consider triangle ACH now. In a similar way, J is the midpoint of AC, N is the midpoint of HC. Look at line segment JN. Obviously, JN would be parallel to AH. Huh? Why? Because JN is the midline of triangle ACH. So I'll call this result as 2A. So we have that JN is parallel to AH. But also, like in the previous case, JN would be half of the size of segment AH because exactly the same reason. JN is the midline of our triangle. So therefore, 2JN is equal to AH. Now let's combine um, these results, particularly 1A and 2A. KM is parallel to uh, AH, which is parallel to JN. So therefore, KM is parallel to JN. We can also establish that using relations 1B and 2B, that in fact, KM has the same measure as JN, equal length line segments. Awesome. Let's now focus on triangle HBC. Pretty much the same observations. Let's call it 3A. Obviously, M is the midpoint of BH, N is the midpoint of HC. Therefore, line segment MN would be simply parallel to line segment BC. MN parallel to BC. And, oh, let's call it 3B now. 
But in addition, we can also say that because MN is the midline of triangle HBC, MN would exactly measure half of the size of BC. So 2MN is equal to BC. And finally, look, let's focus on triangle ABC. Let's see if we can find some similar results here. Obviously, K is the midpoint of AB. J is the midpoint of AC. Combining these two points, it's not too hard to realize that KJ is parallel to BC, which was already parallel to MN. And so let's call it for A um, is that KJ is parallel to BC. But in addition, we can also establish that for B, huh, KJ being the midline of triangle ABC would measure half of the size of BC. So therefore, 2KJ is equal to BC. Again, combining 4A and 3A, we can observe that um, MN is actually parallel to uh, KJ. And also, combining 3B and 4B, we can immediately conclude that MN measures the same size as KJ. It's quite interesting what we, we found so far, because we already established that KM and JN are perpendicular to BC, they are parallel to each other, and they measure the same length. And now when we focus on KJ and MN, those two line segments are also parallel to each other, they measure the same size, but also they are perpendicular to AD. But AD and BC are perpendicular as well, so therefore the conclusion is that J, K, M, N is in fact a rectangle. So we have that J, K, M, N is a rectangle. But wait a second. Rectangles are cyclic. As such, we already proved that four of our points, namely J, K, M, and R, N, are actually concyclic points. And where is the center of that circle? Uh, well, it would be the midpoint of the diagonals. Huh? So we can just focus on one of the diagonals. Draw diagonal uh, KN, this dotted line. And we also have diagonal. So here, this intersection point. So that would be the center of our circle. Okay, now using very similar logic, I will not write it down. It's possible to create another rectangle, namely look at, for instance, line segment IN. Because N is the midpoint of HC and I is the midpoint of BC, that would be simply parallel to altitude BE. But BE is also parallel to uh, KL because KL is the midline of triangle BH and as such it is parallel to BE as well. So we found two parallel line segments, which turns out to be also equal in measure because, as I said, KL is the midpoint or midline of triangle ABH and therefore it measures half of the size of BH and NI is the midline of triangle HCB and it also measures half of the length of BH. As such, NI and KL have equal measure. And by the way, they are also perpendicular to um, line segment AC. Now focus on triangle AHC. It's not too difficult to observe that line segment LM uh, is simply parallel to side AC because it's the midline of triangle AHC. But in a similar way, when you focus on triangle ABC again, KI would be the midline again. And because K is the midpoint, I is the midpoint of the side. And as such, draw this segment as well. Not surprisingly, this would be another rectangle. But what is so special here is that this rectangle, this new rectangle, K, L, and I, shares a common diagonal with our former rectangle J, K, M, N. Namely, when you look at it, you realize that line segment K, N is a diagonal of our rectangle. So, the conclusion is immediate. The second, the green rectangle, again, K, L, N, I, is cyclic. It has diameter K, N, but K, N is the diameter of our other, uh, of our first rectangle, J, K, M, N. So therefore, we're talking about the same circle, basically. Those six points are basically concyclic, right? So, um, so we already established that L, K, M, I, and J, 
these six points are cyclic all we need to do now is to establish that the feet of the altitudes lie on this circle but how to see that well obviously we realize there's a 90 degree angle here and so this gets us thinking for instance focus on uh, this angle eh? LDI focus on this angle that's simply the diagonal of the green rectangle but the diagonal goes through the center and as I said it is the diameter of that circle that we have already so therefore and because it, it, it is 90 degrees uh, point D must lie on that circle huh? because it subtends the diameter of our circle in a similar way you can observe that angle MEJ subtends our diameter another diameter here of our circle MJ I mean the diameter MJ of our circle as such E is also on our circle and finally point F and the feet of the altitude FC is on our circle again because uh, look at angle KFN it subtends the diameter KN and the semicircle and as such F is also on that circle so that concludes our proof that these nine points are all cyclic and we have a circle going through those points so let me try to draw that circle um, our circle will look like pretty much like that that circle is called as the nine point circle it has lots of very very nice properties now we still need to solve this one final piece here so why would the radius of this nine point circle be half of the size of the circumradius now I would like you to focus on the homotety centered at the ortho center now notice that a circle is defined by three points on it let's focus on points L M and N so those points define the nine point circle now all we do is consider the homotety center that's H that would take point L to point A and similarly point M to point B and finally point N to point C it is obvious that now we would have uh, these three points A, B, C would define a new circle and that circle is obviously the circumcircle of triangle ABC and we are done this clearly proves that the homotety will take the nine point circle onto the circumcircle and as such uh, the radius of our nine point circle is simply half of the size of the ra uh, circumradius so that proves the final part of our problem so we are done.